So hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here second year in a row. And last year I presented about logs in combination with low-level discovery, but I felt and I still feel that there was something left untold from the same area of uh, log monitoring. So this is why I'm here uh, today, and I will now present uh, my topic. So logs. Logs are, of course, uh, one of the richest data sources for monitoring, and uh, you have a lot of logs around in your environment, I have no doubts. And what you typically do with the logs, you uh, want to monitor them. So um, Zabbix comes in to help uh, a lot. So it provides you uh, abilities to analyze logs, to count uh, number of matching entities in the logs, and so on. It does it with uh, log and log count items. And I also mentioned here that you can uh, also uh, use custom items as well. Uh, but I want to make a strong point here that, in my opinion, uh, you should only use anything custom when log and log count cannot cover that. So first option is always log and log count, and if that cannot cover your needs, then you should think about anything custom. That is exactly what happened to me, and I will provide several uh, examples. Uh, what, what are those custom uh, monitoring scenarios when you need to apply something, something different than log and log count? So first of all, um, bumping into limit of 600k lines per minute. Um, this is a hard limit for log and log count because uh, max lines per second, I think that is how the setting named, it has a hard limit of 1,000, which turns into 600,000 lines per minute, and you cannot analyze more. What if you need to do that? Well, then use something custom. Uh, what if you want to collect uh, data only for the sake of calculated item which resides on top and calculates something per minute. I will provide a more detailed example, but this is a short summary of that. Multi-line monitoring. Um, Zabbix agent, uh, log and log count items, they operate in single line level. So it, it, doesn't <clears throat> it, it doesn't have this ability to join several different lines and uh, provide some result out of that. So definitely a custom approach needed. And there are some cases when you would like to run your log analyzing uh, item as a passive item. Uh, more details later on this. So first of all, how do we achieve it? How do we uh, achieve custom log monitoring? So in the first place, uh, I would say that we need an uh, implementation which would mimic the agent uh, in regards of log reading. Uh, what I mean by that is that we just simply have to be able to read a log file exactly in the same or similar uh, way as Zabbix agent does. So um, I like a lot the Pareto principle, or otherwise known as 2080 rule, or 8020 rule, which means that uh, with 20% of effort, we can cover 80% of our needs. And this is exactly what I want to also emphasize, because uh, otherwise, if you would make something complex or overcomplicated, you would then better go and, I don't know, edit the agent code and make some modifications there uh, if you are not happy with some limits instead of doing something as I currently will present. So I'm doing something kind of simple, so not to overcomplicate things. Uh, key concepts which I uh, implemented in this idea are those. So I'm kind of mimicking the agent, uh, in a sense, uh, by implementing those four ideas. So first of all, we need to read the log file the same way as agent would. So what agent does, it, uh, during each run, it reads a portion of data which was created during two runs. This is exactly what we also want to implement. Um, make it fast. Uh, we have to operate in bytes. Reading or counting in lines is not uh, efficient performance-wise, so we need to make it read log files in bytes. We should not forget log rotation, and we should also implement uh, one small feature which would talk about what to do when agent was stopped. More details to follow. <clears throat> so first of all, um, reading uh, log file portion by portion. We have to operate in two numbers constantly during each run. So one is how much data did we have before, and next one is how much data do we have now. So we kind of operate with two numbers, but we store we have to store or remember only one number, and that is how much um, data do we have now. <clears throat> so second number always changes first one, and it never ends. So imagine I run this 
log analysis each five seconds, and you can note with the, with the timestamps. So this is how it looks like. I will read the yellow portion. During next run, I will read the green portion, and it never ends. I, I constantly read the, just the relevant uh, fresh, so to say, data. How it happens? So just exactly as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, uh, we check how much data do we have currently, and then we check how much data did we have during last run, and we override the uh, current size with the, with the previous uh, data, and we slice, slice the portion of data that we want. <clears throat> now, um, reading logs in lines is, of course, more understandable for human eye. We tend to use WC minus L. We use uh, tail minus given number of lines. That is the same as counting in base 10, well, in decimal uh, system because we have 10 fingers, so it's well just easier for humans to understand how how to count in in, in base 10. Same is with lines. We, so we don't say that we received, for example, 10,000 new bytes during last minute. We say that we received uh, I don't know 100 or 1,000 new lines per minute. So that is just simply more understandable. Uh, but uh, for performance, uh, we would have a huge problems, and to operate with this approach in lines would be a suicide because. Uh, <clears throat> If we would uh, count something like 26 million lines, we would be counting them just for too long. So we must operate in bytes here. <clears throat> Next thing, don't forget log rotation, because, well, uh, this number of current log size, it constantly grows, grows, up to the moment when we rotate the log. So if we don't pay attention to log rotation, uh, this would simply fail, this approach would fail. So if log uh, became smaller than it was, it means only one thing, it was rotated, we need to start from the beginning. So last, uh, last concept, last, last idea here is about the stop period. So if you stop agent for a while and then you restart it, log actually doesn't care about your agent being stopped or, or started, it just lives its own life and is being constantly appended with data. So you have to choose what you want to do. Would you like, uh, once agent is restarted again, would you like to skip the data for the stop period or would you like to read it? I would say for um, log count type of items, I would choose to skip it because, well, I would rather tend to have a gap instead of the spike. But if you have a log type of item where you want to catch everything, so most likely you would like to still read it. So this is also taken into consideration. So putting those four ideas into one uh, script, we have a working thing here. And if we would remove uh, empty lines and comments, we would end up in 16 lines of code, which exactly falls under this Pareto principle, which I like, yeah? So it's kind of a simple thing, which does the, the log reading. Now, what this thing does as it is the, like uh, here, it would simply read uh, this log portion by portion and echo it. So it would provide you the like full contents of log in portions. Um, and this is kind of a backbone for our future uh, examples because, well, we, we have a frame, we have a method to read the log file. And now let's, let's see some examples how it works. So first one, the limit of 600K. I mentioned why it happens and, well, um, Log and log count, unfortunately, has this limit. So if you, if you have more, you will see the flat line here. You will see maximum value 600K, simply because we have such a hard limit. What if you want to see real situation, what is happening here? Well, after slicing the data in that script, you simply count the amount of lines which you have. <clears throat> Configuration, very simple. Um, yeah, the, the parameters provided uh, for the script log file itself, then should you want to skip? or read the file if you stop the agent, and for how long do you consider the stop period. Um, so for <coughs> quickly checking the performance, so we are able to count a million lines in less than a second with this approach, so I, I would say good enough. If you really, really want to know uh, and avoid the flat line, so that's a uh, way to go, and then the red line will present you real, real numbers. Um, next example, uh, so imagine that in your logs, you have lines which will tell you something about uh, whatever, request processing duration. Uh, you want to collect those durations and monitor them. S similar, uh, similar as we have here. So this example is without any custom stuff. I personally like this way of displaying things a lot. It's basically dots present each individual duration. And then you have calculated item on top which will present you average per minute. So it looks nice, everything is good up to the moment when you have 
okay, 100,000 or 5,000 or 10,000 of those dots, what to do? So you, naturally you wouldn't like to draw them each individual here. And other thing is that you wouldn't even like to collect 10,000 item values most likely just for the sake of uh, having this one average duration uh, value. So it's not a good idea. So you have to put some, some limit and if you get a lot of the matching lines, you would most likely need some, something custom. So again, uh, this same uh, script can be modified to uh, solve this task. And yeah, we have a loop here into which we feed the needed uh, lines and we extract duration and we calculate it immediately. So instead of collecting uh, each and every individual item just for the sake of calculating something on top, we now are able to calculate average durations with a volumes of, uh, and this is by the way a real life example, so we have volumes of 20k lines per, per minute, so yeah. Next one, multi-line analysis. Uh, as mentioned, Zabbix agent with a log and log count, it operates uh, in, in, in single line level. Well, more, more with log, because log count, it, it counts obviously, but uh, log item, it operates in a single line level. What if you have a need to analyze it uh, differently? So if you have two related lines which you want to somehow match and do something about it. So quick example, I have a demo log which will uh, show us some requests and responses. Uh, let's say it's a payment and we, it, both of those lines will have a matching payment ID. So what if you would like to know that this response was never written into log, so it is missing, so it's lost, it's gone. So you need to somehow understand it that for specific payment, you lost a response. <coughs> so, um, uh, yep, just a minute. So um, for the script, I modified it so that it would accept uh, the, the following parameters. It will accept the request, response pattern, then this unique identifier, and then the timeout. How long do we give uh, do we give for this thing to receive the response at all? Because we naturally understand that this response might arrive in some reasonable amount of time. So Zabbix uh, GUI configuration is is uh, again the same as explained in, in variable names, and well. Um, this will work uh, in a sense that we have to also remember something. So we have to remember uh, for a given amount of time that we had some requests and once we receive a response, we can forget about the fact. So we don't want to keep for a while only the fact that we have some requests without responses. For that, we create a temporary directory and in that directory, we will store the very simple things. So first of all, we have a loop which doesn't ask any questions, it's just um, processing requests and storing this unique payment ID into this temporary directory. Uh, next loop, it does uh, the opposite thing, it goes through response patterns and then it immediately deletes the uh, found payment. Again, no, no questions being asked, it just deletes. Third loop, however, it asks questions. So the question it asks is, did we already exceed the given timeout for anything residing in this temporary directory? And here is an example. So we have a bunch of payments in, which are visible in green. So those receive both, both request and response. But some of those, like red ones, they only have a request. So what we will see for 60 seconds, because we configure it so, uh, we will see those two guys living here in this temporary direct directory until the third loop will well state that they exceeded the one minute uh, already and well, they never received a response. So this is exactly what we will have in Zabbix. We will have the fact that payment ID this, payment ID that, they never received the response. <coughs> of course, we will construct a trigger on top, a uh, nice Zabbix feature for X sub in, uh, in event name. So we, we can extract exact payment uh, which has no um, response and the final result is this, yes? So we can have some uh, output based on multiple lines which have something in common. Um, the last case, use case I want to present is running, uh, running log items as passive items. Now, this uh, log file is the very same log file which I presented in initial example. It receives a lot of data. So uh, it, it receives more than 500,000 lines per minute. 
What you typically want to do with such a huge log file, you want to rotate it frequently because, well, you don't want to store it even for one day. So what we do, we rotate it each two hours. And what is visible here, you can see the drops. So those green drops, what are those drops? Uh, they are very easily uh, explained if you understand log rotation. So it happens each two hours. And Zabbix agent uh, log item, it runs as active item. So it means that you cannot really control or predict at what exact point of time will it run. So what can happen after log rotate, it can run after a few seconds the log was rotated. So it will not have a full portion of data to be read. And that's why you see the drops. So maybe for myself, it wouldn't be a problem. But well, manager or someone else might ask you questions like, what are those drops? So if it's some user activity, like why do we have it at all here? And good luck explaining to your manager about log rotate. So better not have it. Better have a smooth line, which is a red line. And how to solve it is basically you simply run um, log item uh, with a custom interval just before the end of the minute, which means also before the log rotate happens. I have to admit that uh, in 7.0 it's solved, because in 7.0 you can already run uh, active items, so including log and log count, with custom intervals. So this is, well, just for the sake of uh, use case demonstration or for installations older than 7.0. Um, the final uh, example when you would like to also run the log item as a passive one is the active passive type of cluster environment. So if you have two nodes, um, which one of them is always active and one of them is, is passive at the same point of time, and for example, you have some log-based monitoring on top, uh, which would rely on logs being there, logs being active. So something is happening in log. You have some no data triggers, or you have some log count-based triggers. So if, it, if it's zero, it's, it's wrong. And what if you apply this uh, same monitoring template to both nodes? One will always have some false positives or even unsupported items if, for example, you have a shared file system and it's always on the active side. So the log file is not even found of the, on the passive node. So what you would do, you would go manually disable all the items, all the triggers, or unlink the template, or whatever else you would do. But you would do it manually. And you can, cannot really control it in a good way. So um, what this solves is exactly that if you have some virtual entity with, which would point into the active node, uh, you could then apply a, a passive type of uh, monitoring for, for log files. And that's how you would constantly analyze everything only on active node without need to switch anything. You apply one template, one set of items, one set of triggers uh, on top of, on top of uh, that virtual entity. And that's how you would always be on the active side. So before preparing for this, I also noticed that uh, 7.2 roadmap con con uh, contains uh, uh, a section about log monitoring that uh, it will be improved in some ways. So I would like to know more about it if anyone from, from Zabbix could comment. And yeah, maybe let's talk about it in the evening. Um, otherwise, that's, that's it for me. So this backbound script uh, I provide in my GitHub, you can download it, use it, customize it, put your custom logic on top. Remember, we are able to read the log file, and then we are able to put any crazy ideas on top. So, yeah, thank you.